yesterday's video was very, very good and important because in that video, I did an exercise on this, on cues on this four hour divergence. The thing is that if you compare the major indexes, cues form the prettiest picture perfect divergence out of the lot. Take a look at Russell's, it's an upside pressure pattern. That comes in context to our divergence, hourly divergence. There's spy lackluster pattern to our hourly. VXX, this thing is at best a downside pressure pattern. What you can see is really the, the trend. You're hitting the channel regression here. Really, that's, that's the way you put that one together. Here's diamonds. See what I mean? The previous one was Q's and last financials. Back to Q's, you can see what I'm talking about. When something like this happens, and it happens with context, um, and this is why the exercise is so important, because sometimes these patterns that are going to catapult the upside, which I called for a long time, I said for a long time, the, the daily needs to run out of juice, and then we're going to have a continuation due to this weakness of that weekly, blah, blah, blah. And for the most part, I've been ignoring the two and four hour charts. It shouldn't do that. Because sometimes the pattern becomes really clear on a four hour chart. Let me illustrate. Here's a two time frame set of four hour and hour charts, respectively. Here's that four hour pattern. It's a clear bottoming at the same levels, yet, I mean, it's a textbook divergence, right? And you can see the pattern in here, but it's not as clear. See what I mean? You bring in the, hour, the four hour and it becomes just speech. And so when you have a pattern like this and it's happening as a completing piece of a puzzle, in other words, the context under which it's happening is perfect. The, the entire system here called for a continuation. And so that validates the appearance of the pattern. And so once, once you do that, then the pattern becomes important and then you have to ask the question, What's going to happen when the hourly up cycles? It is obvious that this down cycle that drove the divergence, drove the price to the down cycle, is going to end. So now you have the four hour figured out. Let's move the hourly to the right and bring in the 15. So this is the down cycle that you ask what's going to happen when this thing turns. So the, the way you turn something like this is you need a pattern underneath to help it turn. And so the 15 minute has to technically bottom and it does that before the technical bottom of the hour you see how it happens right around here and we still have momentum in here but we technically bottom in here because there's a pattern of support underneath let's call the five so i continue to have the hour here and it just added the five in here so we're looking at this moment this technical bottoming of the 15 happens because there's a positive divergence on the five. So when this five minute divergence happens, you understand that this is the beginning stages of the turn of the whole thing. When you technically bottom that 15, one of two things can happen. At this particular point, the establishment of the bottom of the price, the bottoming of the price is pretty much there. When this five minute diverges like this, one of two things can happen over here. I have done this exercise several times if you've been following along. One thing is this thing just starts going from there and there's going to be a little pullback to pick up that uh, hourly and turn it. Or there's going to be a price retest all the way down. Sometimes those price retests don't happen all the way down because there's just not enough energy left on the trend. The, the, the momentum is lost because you have to remember that we are in the middle of an, of an upside divergence of magnificent proportions on the four hour chart. And so there's just not enough energy to, to retest. And so when that happens, you have to, first of all, trust your in instincts, number one, and number two, trust the quality of your knowledge and your experience, because this is not our first time at the rodeo. We have seen this, in my case, hundreds of times. And so I trust this dynamic because I have seen it play out hundreds of times. 
when a setup like this happens and it's within good context with a with the larger time frames and you have a divergence and the down cycle of the hourly is about to end and I have a technical bottom on the five that's preceded by an offset divergence on the on the I mean on a technical bottom on the fifteen preceded by an offset divergence on the five sometimes I get my time frames confused. Uh, then you know that this is it. This thing is about to turn, and so you could either trust your entry here or wait for that confirmation. That confirmation is this pullback that you kind of want it to be a retest all the way down to the bottom. But there's just like I said, not enough energy for this. I have to pause that because I realized that the market was opening real fast. Let's take a look at the opening. We we opened to 78 cents. We were at two million in volume. Now we're at 3 million and up to 87. And there's the continuation to the upside after this pullback. That's another thing that I'm coming to realize right now. Take a look at this very interesting situation that tends to happen because of the dynamic of the market at the end of the trading day. The price is reluctant to move with great gusto during the day and it just meanders or drifts without much movement and you pull back against the trend like this and you open to a gap up like this and you open to a gap up what's interesting about this is that in this case here you could have actually said the same thing you have you have the the, the price continuation on opening over here and then that quickly ends because we were in the middle of weakening that hour, you could say that. But take a look at this. Gap up over here, and then gap up over here. The gap up over here is not gigantic because there's a lot of weakness coming in here. But nevertheless, take a look at the time lapse. This is pre-market, and this is the opening. Take a look at that 60. Goes from 72 to 80, I'm looking at the MACD. And the 15 turns off. The divergence is not lost, it's still there. Same thing here with the 5 and the 1 minute. And then let me show you the hourly or the 60 minute time lapse. This is closing yesterday. Take a look at the daily. See? Take a look at the weekly. There's the continuation. And we know the 60 and 15, obviously. So that's what's going on here. So I have to pause my thought in here. Let me see if I can get it back. So you trust the quality of your knowledge and your experience. This pullback, which is really the divergence that wants to make, that lacks enough energy to be made because we're in the middle of this context which is an, an upside divergence on, on the four hour chart, you gotta trust this. You could have entered here or wait for this confirmation. And the divergence comes to pass because everything underneath it is supporting and feeding the move to the upside, that the divergence, the positive divergence on the four wants to have happen. That's its purpose. That's its reason for being. At this particular point, you have a pattern in place, a bottoming pattern in place, and all the pieces of the puzzle come together. Divergence here, check. Is the divergence happening within context on the daily and weekly? Check, check. Is the 15 down cycle ending? Check, technical bottom, that will lead to a divergence to undermine and stop the down cycle of the 60. Is the down cycle of the 60 looking like it needs to end and enter into an up cycle? Yes, check, check. Pattern of support on the five, present, check. Everything is there. This is a puzzle that slowly the pieces come together. You have to have enough patience, understanding, knowledge, and experience to put something like this together. And when something like this comes along, you pull the trigger. And I showed you what this thing did uh, yesterday, in this particular case, uh, you could have gone for looking at the uh, at the divergence on the on the four-hour chart to the 106s right here. The 106s, no problem. I know that I'm going to put them in the money with absolute certainty. Now I'm showing you make with force. This thing happened on Thursday. This thing called for. Uh, third week expiration, so the May 16th that expired, this is Thursday, this is Friday, you could have traded that and that probably made a fair amount of money because these guys were out of the money at dollar fifty, and you put them in the money 50 cents. And so I'm showing you the make week force because you can also put this into consideration. It is a four hour divergence that's going to 
play out, if you extrapolate this thing, there's going to be a pullback in the middle of it and then a continuation, and that will give you pretty much the, the range of its power. And so the first leg of it is here. Now, when how is that going to happen? So the five minute turns, then there's the up cycle of the five. It's going to technically top, preceding the end of that first run on the 15, the end of that, that uh, up cycle. And so you have to first have a five minute technical top. At this particular point, the, the four hour is coming into effect. It has already turned right here. The 15 has developed. And so what happens with this technical top? It pulls back and then it has a continuation. That continuation will flush out a technical negative divergence on the five will, that will give you the technical top on the five. This moment here is an important moment because this is the ceiling of this particular stage of the outside on this four hour right here. This is a good moment to assess your position and say, I'm gonna get out and now, now the 15 has to pull back. This is where I need the hourly because at this particular point, the hourly has developed to the upside here, right? And I know that we are going to start the undermining process to bring this thing to, to, a, to a stop. So this thing pulls back, the ceiling has been established, we get out. Now let's take a look at our position before I go any further. So we already established the 106 May week force and the entry would have been right around here, right around uh, three o'clock or so. So here's the 106 calls, 255, the five minute rewind and one minute gives you the entry. And the rewind is this because the off cycle of the five had gotten tired so then you have, that gives you the retest. But there's not enough energy, like I explained, to drive the price all the way down because we're in the middle of an upside divergence on the four within great context. So all you have is a little down cycle on the five. And when this thing tires and the one minute will give you the entry, then you know that this is just a pullback on trend. I have already established in previous videos how divergences are nothing more than pullbacks on established trend. The trend in this case started here when the 15 turned. All of these are pullbacks on this uptrend that's establishing. So the one minute rewinds, I mean the five minute, and you enter. These options are 53 cents. So your job is to ride this thing. You're gonna expect the technical topping of the five over here at around 1020. At around 1020, where are you? Here, at already at 126%. So you drop these guys from 53 cents to $1.20. Well, you understand, okay, we're gonna pull back and continue. There's a lot of energy to, in this case, eclipse previously established stop. So that will give you the establishment of the divergence, which will then in turn give you the technical top of the 15. This is when you say, now we're gonna pull back. Now the 15 is going to pull back. There's a massive amount of downside building up. So we establish a ceiling. This is a good moment to call it a day at around 11.45. And so 11.45, the five minute has a negative divergence, the 15 technically tops. This is the beginning of the obvious pullback on trend. You are at 160%. Your tree can, at this particular point, not really end, but enter pause. And what you wanna do is just pull back your money because you understand that this thing is gonna pull back. Let this thing pull back at the same time, you're paying attention to what's actually happening with the four hour and the hour. The pullback is of such magnitude because it's a four hour divergence, okay? That's why it allowed a two-day pullback. That it actually, because you form a divergence here, but it's a divergence within poor context. The uptrend is too strong, just like what's happening right now with SPY. What happened yesterday with SPY with that bullshit little divergence, which is this one where we're looking at cubes, obviously. We have this pattern in here. Uh, so when this divergence happens, what's the context? The context is we're, we're just in the beginning stages of a four hour monster that's about to come into full force. This thing has no chance. And so you let this thing pull back. Now the pullback brings down the 60, so the 60 just rewinds. And this is the classic end of day look where you are completely long. And when you see longs like this, they are happening because they're fighting trend. So just go and identify the trend. In this case, 
it's being fueled by an incredible offset divergence in great context in the daily and weekly. This is the resume of the uptrend. It's a continuation textbook picture. And if you bring about the, the five minute, take a look at how the five minute at this particular point is also throwing grapefruit. It's done. This is a good moment to enter the same pattern but with a different position because the 106s are now in the money. Move up to the 107s. Don't go crazy. The 107 calls, and you enter those at the end of the 23rd. Take a look. End of trading on Monday, the 23rd. It is ridiculously obvious that the price will gap up. These options are 33 cents. So how are you going to play this one? Well, you're going to play it very similar to the previous one, right? In other words, the trend is going to resume, so the hourly turns back off. And the five minute is going to technically top first. We're in the middle of a huge, powerful upside. Let's call the four to compare. So when the five minute tops, what is the four hour doing? It's incredibly powerful. The 15 is going up. The hourly is going up. Let's call back the hourly. What is the hourly doing? Extremely powerful to the upside. This thing is unfolding. It's in the middle of playing out. So the five minute technically tops right around here at around 10. 45, let's take a look at those options. 1045, you're at 269%. The five minute technically tops at this particular point, but you understand that there's enough energy to drive the price higher to eclipse the previously established top and create a five minute of uh, negative divergence right here. That's your divergence, and this will create the technical topping on the 15. This is a good moment for you to say, I'm good with my winnings. What is that time? I eclipsed the previously established top, so my position that was worth 269% is now worth more. This is around noonish, okay? And so around noon, you establish a negative divergence on the five, and that is the establishment of a technical top on the 15. That happens with interesting context. This thing is diverging all this time. What we're banking on is the momentum and the fact that we're in the middle of a four-hour upside divergence. That's what gives this thing the fuel to eclipse previously established tops, which is the reverse of what we were looking at at the entry. At the entry, the five minutes just didn't have enough momentum, and there was not enough poise on the trend to create the retest over here. That's why just a little rewind, and this is where I tell you one of two things can happen when you have this technical bottom on the 15. Either you have a technical divergence with a perfect price retest, or you just have a pullback. This pullback is the divergence that wanted to become that didn't because there's lack of power. So you have to identify that on an entry and identify this on an exit. Over here, the conditions are different. The conditions are that we're in the middle of a four hour positive divergence with good context playing out. And so that gives you the certainty of the price retest higher eclipsing previously established stocks, flushing out a five minute negative divergence, thus establishing a technical top on the 15. This is a good moment to exit at around noonish on the 107 call. So this is the five minute topping at 269. And at 1205, as I just showed you, the five minute has a negative divergence, effectively technically topping the 15. You are at 333%. Imagine what can happen to your portfolio when you thread together a couple of monster trades like this. The first one on the 106 calls, getting out on the five minute negative divergence gives you 160%. The second one, applying the <coughs> same technique, gives you 333%. Let me give you a scenario. Let's say that you put in $1,000 on the first one here. You make 1,000 into 2,600 because your 1,000 gives you $1,600. So 1,000 becomes $2,600. So now you have $2,600. You exit your position over here because you are understanding of the pullback to let this thing rewind and then you position yourself for the entry on the 107s. Now you have $2,600. You can put, let's say, 2,000 on those and leave 600 on, on tow. And so $2,000 give you 333%. What is that? 333% on $2,000. $2,000 times 333%. That's $6,660. So $6,000. $660 plus the original entry, which is $2,000. So you turn $2,000 into 
and then you still have 600 in reserve. You have turned $1,000 into $9,260 by understanding this very thing. By understanding the magnitude of this powerful divergence. It's the same thing that I showed you recently on VXX. The difference over here is that we were on a daily divergence. So you use your time frames underneath to time this thing and get in. You have a daily divergence with an hourly divergence. You have to identify the loss of momentum on this thing. Get out of the pullbacks and enter on these continuations. This gave you three trades in a row. The pattern I just showed you on cues gave you two trades in a row. And it's still going. But at this particular point, now you're starting to fight a lot of opposition here with these patterns. So it's it, now it starts becoming risky to stay longer than this. Because now you are entering into a new thing. Now the, the continuation has somewhat laid out. And as these guys lose momentum, they can turn in the direction of this divergence. However, there's momentum on this daily. But that's the power of unleashing uh, an important divergence, like in this case, the four-hour divergence that I showed you on cues. I rest my case.